Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. It's time for more video on the computer thing. And I've pretty much started, although you wouldn't think so here because I haven't actually started doing anything to the computer itself. As you can see, it's there the same way it was before. Although I started cleaning this desk, it was a terrible state before I made this video. Besides recapping the motherboard, which is going to be done, a couple of you commented on that, and although I already pointed that out in the video, whatever. But what I want to do is I want to protect the line input and line output of the computer, so I'm going to make a little circuit. So if a nasty high voltage from a bad earth or something should get into the um, input or the output, it's only going to destroy the op amp and not the computer's onboard sound, which is what happened to one of my other computers. Unlike nearly everything else I do, I'm going to salvage the components from old circuit boards. This is a tape recorder circuit board. Got plenty of op amps on here I could use. I've got one here, 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 and uh, that's about it. There's a few other chips on here. We've got some quad bi bi quad bilateral switches, and there's a Dolby encoder right there, which I'm not going to need. But these op amps are going to come in pretty handy. I've also made brackets for mounting the fans. Very simple brackets, just made out of a couple of pieces of wood. But they seem to work well enough. The blades can go around without hitting anything. And that's the important thing. I also had to trim this blade down a little bit so it will fit, but... Should still move enough air. I thought the best start would be making a power supply, which is what I've done right here. Had a spare LM317 regulator. And this is to adjust the voltage from this transformer. It'll do up to about 20 volts. I've got it set to 12 volts, which is what I'm going to use. I have also taken those op amps out. That was a bit of a bugger of a job to do. Made a pinout thing. <clears throat> My train of thought is really gone when I'm trying to make these videos. I have one of the chips sort of wired up because I'm going to power it off a single rail power supply. So I've put in some biasing resistors to put the non-inverting input to half of what the supply voltage is. And because both of these chips are going to be used as a buffer and not any kind of actual amplifier, I've connected the inverting input and the output together. So, we should have half the supply voltage at the non-inverting input, and we should also have the same at the output. So let's turn on my meter, check this little circuit's working. Actually, I know it's working because I tested it earlier, but whatever. Okay, this pin here goes into the... Actually, I better just measure what the supply voltage is first. And we have... 12.2 volts. So now measure the input on on one of the non-inverting inputs. We have 6.03. Okay, this resistor goes to the other non-inverting input, and we have 6.06. .06. Now to test the outputs. This one we have 6.12. This one we have 6.10. That's close enough. Okay, I've got one of the op-amp circuits built, which is the circuit on this side here. And you can see, here I've connected up a group of four phono jacks, or at least you would if I was showing it in the camera. And here I've connected up a phono jack, I mean a uh, headphone jack plug thingy. Well, that's what's going to go into the computer. And since I mostly connect all of my stuff with phono jacks, that's why I've used one of these. So anyway, this side of the circuit is going to take a signal from an external source, like a tape player or a record player or a MP3 or whatever. And it's going to go through this op amp, 
to isolate it just in case we have any weird voltages going on between the two devices anyway that signal is going to pass through the op amp and into this plug and go into the computer I've tested this circuit with an audio signal and I'm pleased to say it works now all I've got to do is just do the exact same thing for the other op amp and I will show schematic so I'll have the other one connected up and then I'll do a little demonstration and I think that'll be that for this video Wow just look at that it really looks like something now I know what some of you are asking me why am I using big heatsink like this when all the voltage regulator is going to be doing is powering a couple of op amps well here's the thing it's going to be powering a little amplifier as well I'm going to put in another couple of wires going off and they're going to go off to the amplifier might put a small filter in line with that wire so you know if the amplifier interferes with this too much then that's what I'll do but anyway I think now is now would be a good time to wire it up and test it okay so let's test this little amplifier well it's not an amplifier it's a buffer circuit got this transformer hooked up which is powering it so remember it's got its own built-in rectifier and regulator and there's the buffer itself both buffers and that is connected into my tape recorder here which is recording the sound as we speak so if I start a file playing on the computer actually some of you have a thing against me using a tracker to make my music on well you can all suck it because that's what I like to do. But as you can probably hear, it is coming through onto the tape recorder. My microphone is back there. So I've got this going into the back of the computer. It's going over to this little funnel jack here. With the wire rod along, excuse the mess in my room, having a time to tidy it. It's gone into the cassette deck, which I'll just prove by unplugging those. Oh, that's another thing. That's why I want isolation between the computer and the tape deck, because when the ground isn't connected, hear that very nasty buzz? Anyway, let's do a recording onto the computer. Well, okay, now recording onto the computer through this little circuit. I've got the other set of phono jacks connected up to the tape deck, which the microphone is going through. They're connected to the line out. And the computer seems to be very sensitive. I don't think this thing could possibly be doing any amplification because I've designed it to have a gain of one. And as you can clearly see in here, it's coming through good and strong. Even though I've got the line level right down as far as it will go, it won't go down any further than that. Oh, this camera might, this picture might be a bit shaky. Thank goodness for virtual dub and D shaker. And I just to prove it really is this. I'll turn this down. And now there is nothing. So I'm using the camera's microphone right here. My camera's noisy microphone that goes meh all the time for some reason. camera sounds like the voices on Family Guy, it goes meh all the time. Okay, turn the knob a little more. So you get good volume level. And there you go. Well, as promised, here is the schematic of the buffer amp thingy. At the top here we've got the power supply. And basically with the two op amp chips I've made four of those 
these circuits here. And well, that's basically it. Following about the slightly odd resistor configuration of the LM317 here, well, I couldn't be asked to figure out what resistors I needed, so I just put I just experimented with different resistors until I got the result I wanted. And there you go. Probably should put another capacitor here. But anyway, next thing to do is I'm going to recap this motherboard and also replace the thermal grease on the heatsink because I don't think the stuff that's on there is actually very good. And that will be the next thing to do. So, till next time, goodbye.